Hello Rhinos! Did you watch your favourite TV programme last night? Get out a bar of chocolate. Said to yourself, I'm only going to eat two rows. Ate the two rows, folded the paper over, put it down. But at the end of the programme, you'd still eaten the whole thing anyway. Then this video is for you. Why am I qualified to talk about this? Well, my name is John Collett and in March 2018, I got diagnosed with type two diabetes and within six months, I managed to reverse my condition and I wanna help you do it too. Before we get started, I wanna clear something up. When I talk about sugar cravings, I'm talking about processed sugar or added sugar. I'm not on about sugar, which you find in real food like fruit. That sugar is really good for you and those foods have really good additional other benefits like fiber in there, which are gonna do you a really good job when you're trying to reverse your type two diabetes. So let's get into it. My seven tips for stopping those sugar cravings as a type two diabetic. Tip one, educate yourself. In his book, Sugar, Fat, Salt, How the Food Giants Hooked Us by Michael Moss, he explains how the food companies hired chemists to design their food. Now, the main reason they did this was because they given one instruction and that instruction was to find people's bliss point. Find the bliss point and people are gonna wanna eat what people are going to want to eat more of the food. Now, what these chemists discovered was that when you put processed sugar in food, that our brains light up as if we had just taken cocaine exactly the same way. So our, every time we eat processed food or sugary food, what happens is our brain starts having a party. In the documentary, Sugar, the Bitter Truth, Robert H. Lustings, MD, explains an experiment with 55 rats. The 55 rats are all made to be addicted to cocaine, and then they stick them in cages. And these rats have two choices of water they wanna drink. Water laced with cocaine, which you'd think that's where they'd go, or water laced with sugar. Now guess out of the 55 rats, how many of those rats drank the cocaine water? Just five. The other 50 all drank the sugar water because they got a bigger hit from it. So you see what the food companies have done in producing this easy lifestyle, easy to cook food, They've got us all addicted to processed sugar. So why is this such a dangerous thing to happen? Well, we need to understand that. We need to understand how your body used to work and how your body works now. How your body used to work is you used to eat the food. The food got turned into glucose into your body. That would then go through your bloodstream. Then there's millions and millions of cells in your body that want to absorb that 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 glucose for energy so what happens is your pancreas produces a hormone called insulin and that tells those cells that it can absorb that energy so that's what it does any excess glucose that the body the cells can't absorb then gets stored in your muscles it gets stored in your liver known as glycogen and then it gets stored in your fat cells so that it can be burnt later for additional energy how your body works now is you eat the food, it gets turned into glucose, it goes into your blood system, your pancreas produces the insulin, but the cells say, enough's enough mate, back off. So they, they're basically trying to say, I don't want any more. So what happens is all that glucose get, goes into your liver, 
goes into your pancreas, more of it gets turned into fat cells. And now the issue is, is your body doesn't communicate with itself very well because you've got fat in your pancreas, and you've got fat in your liver. And this is known as insulin resistance. So the other thing about eating this food, it burns real quick. It shoots up really fast and comes down. So you want to eat again quickly. The other thing that happens is that to, to, pro, to get the cells to absorb this food, your pancreas has to produce a lot of insulin. Now you go talk to a type 1 diabetic and they'll tell you that the more insulin you put into your body, the hungrier you get. So you see, it just becomes a massive, really bad circle. Now when you've got all this fat in your pancreas and liver and your body's not communicating very well with it itself I, as well, this causes other problems. Causes, it causes respiratory problems, heart problems, vision problems. It makes you more prone to disease. It also makes you more prone to infection, so you're more likely to have amputations when you do have an infection. What you've got to realize is, is that all of these food companies have been poisoning us, been poisoning you. And all they care about is getting you to eat more food. There's no difference between them and the drug dealer on the corner that, you, that, that, that provides you with that free sample to begin with, guess you hooked, and then guess you keeping on coming back for more. Ch step two, change your perception. Change the way about how you think about food and what you say about food. If I was to put a chocolate cake here, and then I was to put a bar of chocolate there, and then some biscuits, you're probably thinking to yourself, actually, I wouldn't mind some chocolate, I wouldn't mind some biscuits, I wouldn't mind a bit of chocolate cake right now. And that's because you're wired. You're wired to want those things through the addiction and through TV advertising on telly. All you see constantly is adverts, cartoons, TV programs, all talking about how great it is to have cupcakes and have cake. Anyone who ever tries to go on a diet, they're all demonized for being eating rabbit food and it always goes out really bad and they end up binging right at the end or at the end every single time. You're programmed to want to have that food in everything that you do. You should go have a look at the people who sponsor these TV programs when you watch them on TV. It would be an eye-opener for you. But the good news is, if they can change your perception about the food you're eating, you can change the perception that you have about the food that you're eating. Next time you go shopping and you hit that chocolate aisle, biscuit aisle, cake aisle, baking aisle, start visualizing this poison symbol on those items. You wouldn't go around eating food which had a poison symbol on it, would you? <laughs> okay. Next time you see it, say these words, it's poison in a bag. That's all there is, it's poison. It's poisoning me, it's poisoning my family. I'm not eating poison. The more you say this to yourself, the more, more you will start to change your perception of the food that you are eating. Then start changing your perception about the food that you do need to eat, the real food that you do need to eat. Start seeing it as healthy food. Start seeing, seeing it as energizing food. Start seeing it as the food that's going to give you the energy to get through your day so you can smash your goals, that so you can become a £6,000 charging rhino and nothing can stop you. Tip three, learn to read labels. There's 56 different names for sugar. They've got more names than the Inuits have for snow or Eskimos. We've got dextrose, fruit, fructose, sutrose, fructose corn syrup, cane sugar, the list is endless. Now, when you do read a label, when it comes to the ingredients, what you tend to find is whatever's got the biggest majority of ingredients appears at the top and then as you get less ingredients, it goes down. But you've got, you, you, what you'll start seeing is all the different names for sugar in there. 
when you look at the energy, and that's the one I look at because it tends to be, I find it a bit easier when I look at the energy, you see the carbs, you see the fat content, you see the sugar content. They will also have a percentage of the amount of food, the amount of grams of sugar that is in that particular product per serving, and then obviously per box, okay? So, but how much sugar should you be eating as a type two diabetic? Well, if you look at the American Health Association, British Health Association, Australian, they're all roughly about the same. They all recommend around about nine teaspoons or 37 grams for men and about six teaspoons or 25 grams for women. But the World Health Organization, WHO, they only actually recommend about 10 grams of sugar a day. And I would say you need to that really needs to be your goal as much as possible, as close to it as you can. It's, it's, it's near impossible to get rid of it all, but you know, there it is. But yet again, I want to stress, I'm not talking about the sugar that you find in real food. I'm on about the sugar that you find in processed food, okay? I'll put a list in the description below. Tip four, eat real food. What foods are the best for dealing with these sugar cravings. Well, I personally recommend real food, which is high in fat and protein. Things, things like meat, avocados, nuts, there's a big list. Yet again, there's gonna be a link in the description. You can download a food guide with a list of foods that are good for you to eat as a type two diabetic. Now, what these foods do is fat allows you to burn energy slowly. So rather than have those massive ups and downs that you get when you're eating sugary food, it releases the energy steadily through the day. And so you end up being less hungry. Okay, so eat real food. Tip five, change what you drink. No more soda, no more fruit juices, no more energy drinks, no more orange juice. Okay, orange juice, you know, the stuff that you get that comes in a carton, in a fridge. There's more, there's more processed sugar in that than there is in any energy drink out there. And I know you thought it was healthy marketing, right? Where well, they were. Okay, so it's, uh, but yeah, you wanna be drinking at least two liters of water a day. And if you wanna put lemon or lime in it, that's fantastic. If you can drink green tea, and if you are gonna drink tea, use whole milk or coffee um, as well. But yet again, I recommend if you're gonna put milk in, you can drink it with the whole milk. Um, or almond milk, even better option for you as far as that's concerned. Now, the other thing about drinking water is sometimes when we actually feel hungry, we're not. And what I would recommend to you is go and drink a pint of water, okay? The reason why I say that is because quite often when you drink the water, your hunger pain goes away. Because the real reason you're feeling hungry is because you're actually dehydrated. So I read a stat, I think we can go something like two weeks without, eat, without, without, without eating, but we can only actually last three days without water. So that's what I recommend, drink more water, especially when you're hungry, cut down on the snacking. Sixth tip, really important, change your environment. Say, let's just say one of your friends come up to you and say, I want to tell you something. I'm an alcoholic. Yeah, you probably knew already. But what, what you wouldn't say to them is, I got a great idea. I know exactly how the best way to resolve your alcoholism. Let's go down the king's head and stay there for three weeks. By far, that is the best place for you to go. You wouldn't say to an alcoholic to go there, okay? So why is it that in your house right now, you've got processed sugary food sitting in your cupboards, hidden in a drawer, right? Pizzas, ready meals that you can just warm up. You need to get this out of your house. Go get a bin bag right now, stick it all in, throw it out. If it's not around you, you're not gonna wanna eat it, okay? But if it is all around you, you are gonna to wanna to eat it. Get it out of your house, change your environment. And my last tip for you, don't do this alone. We have got a 12 week program called 
reversing type 2 diabetes. It's designed to help you on your stages to reversing your type 2 diabetes. In the description below, there's a link that'll take you to my website and you can book a 15 minute discovery call with me. And you'll be able to see if this program is a good fit for you and if you're a good fit for the program. To seeing you on a call, but just remember, you're not a number. You're a rhino. Now charge.